Pilots and welcome back to Flight Academy Season 5 brought to you by Out of Art Gaming. As always, my name is Phil and today we have Andy versus our reigning champion, Ben, who is aiming for his third title this season. But joining me to discuss this match and the next couple of matches this week, we have... Hi guys, it's Amy. Hey Amy, welcome back. Flight Academy is in full effect. Uh, we are well over the halfway point now. Uh, these pilots are really trying to seal their top four slots. Uh, I know that you're you're a fan of Scum, right? I love Scum. You know me. They're space pirates. Um, they've got to be loved. Absolutely. And plus, we've got two cool ships in the Razor Crest and the Rogue on there. Uh, coming up against the Rebel Scum with Magva and Luke. Uh, it's gonna be gonna be an interesting one this I reckon. We've seen Andy fly Luke quite aggressively and I'm wondering who his target is actually going to be. Cause uh, I think to this point I don't think we've seen Q9 actually go down. The Razor Crest is very hardy. Yeah. I think this is funny as it's probably the first time I've actually seen the Razor Crest in flight, so quite interested to see how it goes I mean that's not surprising it is a cool ship um, Mando was very popular when he first came out because he had a very solid loadout but now his loadout has been hit quite hard but Q9 is a good one um, he has a really cool ability when he does an advanced maneuver he can gain a strain to do a calculate or barrel roll which not gonna lie is pretty good. Unfortunately, he doesn't have much in the way of blues. It's only his straights that are blues, so he's got to be careful with what he does, but that's a very fast, aggressive move from Dirge there. Very straight into the middle. Yeah. Those rogues, they can they can get in quick. And they've got one of my favourite upgrades on there, the Proton Cannon as well, which is just brilliant when it comes into play. Four dice, change one to a crit, and because it's bullseye only and the rogue has dead to right, you can't use green tokens to evade. So good. Wondering, has he managed to get an arc here? Or even range? I think he'd definitely have arc, I just don't know if he's got range at this point. Ooh. Right. Definitely now has range, now don't know if he has arc. It's going to be a close one, that. I think if he has got arc, it'll definitely be on the back. Yeah. Back corner. Oh yeah, definitely out of range. Got range. Let's just check that arc. It's oh, it's very close. Oh, it's one of those really annoying ones where you have to get it just right to see it. Definitely can't use a laser on that. No arc in the end there. Wow. That tell you what, you could look at that a dozen times and say yes and no so many times because it looked like it had it, but clearly no arc there. So Magva actually quite lucky to not take some early shots in there. Unfortunate for Ben there. I think if he'd have stuck back, he would have been able to get a shot into Magva, but then he would definitely have been being shot back. Uh, you'll have to go the long way around that obstacle but it's going to put him into a nice pincer position onto Andy there with Ben's ships now if you were to join in Flight Academy what 
medium based ship would be the one you would be most likely to go for, do you reckon? Oh, medium based. Uh, do you know what? I actually don't know. Tough decision I'm still getting to used to medium based ships because I'm so used to it just being small and large. Yeah. I mean, there are more medium based ships coming into the game now, so the, the split is getting a bit better for them, but still. I mean, you have Empire. And First Order, do you have any scum anymore? I can't remember now. Uh, I used to, uh, back in 1.0, but for 2.0 I've not really got anything. I mean, I have on TTS, just not in real life at the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so it's mainly just Empire and First Order. So the medium base options are very limited there. Then you've got the G for First Order, the Reaper, the Brute, and the Punisher for empires, so it's going to have a wealth of medium base ships. That's where pretty much all of them are nowadays, but Yeah. I mean the U Wing is a solid honest... ship. Yeah. I wanna say the Thai Reaper. I was heavily considering that. Heavily considering the Reaper, because I, I almost automatically decided I was going to fly Whisper this season, and I was very debate, very much debating what to go with it. I was, oh, I was so close to doing the Punisher, but having flown it a couple of games before, it was just a little bit underwhelming, unfortunately, which is a shame because I love that ship. I'm surprised you didn't go for your K Wing. Again, was very tempted. But I really wanted to fly Whisper, and apparently uh, someone, me, set the rules that you couldn't mix factions, so I couldn't take a K-Wing and a Whisper. That would be an interesting mix-up there. I mean, Future Flight Academy, maybe you could mix the factions, see how that goes? Possibly, that would be just absolutely mental, though. But it looks like we are about to have our first shots. Uh, Andy has the first player token, so it's going to be Luke with an instinctive aim, proton torp into Q9 with his no target lock, which he's not a big fan of because it was jammed off. But that's it's a good pretty roll. good. Yeah, two shields off already. Half the battle with the Razor Crest. It's just I don't know why, but it's such a hardy ship. It just takes so long to actually get the damage through on it. It's a chunk. Yeah. Oh, that's disappointing. No focus Ooh. there for Dirge. Uh, ben clearly disappointed in that role as he's just moved back for slightly. Ouch! He's got the lock, but he's in a tough position because with Magva. And in fact, the entire Revel is here, you can only re-roll one dice. Saving that lock. I, I think that's a good idea. Magva has no issues with her target lock, though. Oh, wow. Two more damage into Q9. Not quite half-pointed, but... That's got to be some of the most damage I've actually ever seen on a Razor Crest. There's a lot of damage. There's a very good start for Andy there. Four, four points of damage on the Razor Crest, which is a six point ship, to no damage back. He's got to be happy with that first engagement. Be interested to see where he goes if he tries to block Q9 with Mag for this turn, though. Pretty solid move there. Oh, 
always attempting a jam, but I think not realise that you can't quite jam like that. It's an action that doesn't get used all that often, to be honest. You normally jam with either false transponders or the jabbing beam rather than the action itself. Could coordinate Luke, though. But no, just taking the focus, going for a... Uh... Going mods on herself. But yeah, I do know what you mean. The Reaper is would be quite a cool ship. I'd have been tempted to do the Reaper and a Striker just to have like utter craziness with the uh, ailerons. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And I do like a thematic list as well, especially like a good little Scarif Flight Academy list. I mean, it, it would have been great up against these U Wings and X Wings. It would have literally been like Scarif all over again. Like, yeah. And I kind of want to just have a list with like a load of Strikers and a Reaper against a couple of U-Wings and X-Wings as a full list now. What if they'll do a Scarif scenario? I'm sure I've done one at some point. And the guy that I was up against did a Rebels um, one with a load of um, X-Wings and a couple of U-Wings and I just had like a massive swarm of the uh, TIE Strikers. It was hilarious and it was, to be honest, I absolutely loved it. He didn't yeah. love it. He got um, annihilated by the three million striker ships that I had on the board book. And there's so many... I know the Ewing's got that turnaround, but it still makes it... When the, mm. the striker can just get in so many crazy positions, it, it's a tough one to try and handle. I might need to actually get the striker back on the board. It's been a while since I've uh, flown them. I, don't, I think I've got two or three. I can't, I'll have to double check. I think I've got two, but when we played this game, um, we just had the bases on the board and pretended that the models were out on the... We just decided to have an, an all-out deathmatch, basically, and ignore some of the rules. Sometimes it, it took us sometimes literally all day, it. but it was fun. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the more points you add to the game, the longer it takes them. Recently did a 40 point epic game and we called it after two and a half hours. <laughs> it was great fun though. Really good fun to play some epic again. I've right. not played epic in such a long time. Well, this looks, looks very uh, up close and personal. Yeah, I'm thinking that Luke is doing yeah, Luke is doing a proton torp into Dirge. It's an unfortunately low roll there, but that is double of eight. Dirge okay with that. It's a shame because he didn't have Arc on Q9. I think he would have preferred to have like gone all in on Q9, but you know what? Not always possible. Oh, but Dirge's shots are not doing well, so... Good job he's got that focus there. Two shields down on Magma. Those green tokens... Absolutely not able to do anything anyway, because of the dead to rights. Oh, poor Q9. Yikes. Needs to reload his combat protocols at this point. And his defense protocols. Wow, that's a crit. Which is. Console fire. Not looking good there, and that's a big three points that Andy has scored there, half point in Q9. If Andy is able to take Q9 down, it makes it a much tougher battle for Ben because he then needs to half and kill a ship to get back in the game because both Andy's points. Oh. We're going straight over the top. I 
would have expected a uh, stop and set around there. Yeah. Oh, but there, it, there is the jab. Yeah, you can't miss it with the size of that token. <laughs> no. The oversized tokens are great. They are. They can be a bit interesting on the table sometimes when you've got lots of ships, but they just make it so clear to see. Um, one thing I will say is the crit token probably could do with being used a little bit more because sometimes people forget about putting that out, and it does mean that we are. Uh, some of the crits do get missed occasionally, I'm afraid. Obviously, it's no maliciousness on any player's part. Again, we're doing multiple games, quick games in 30 minute slots. We actually did 21 games in two four hour sessions between the seven players. So it's a lot of games very quickly. And whilst we'd like it not to happen, some things do get missed occasionally. So. just to get rid of that jam, just take a calculate just to get rid of it or no he's going to try and get in Luke's way not a bad shout if he's not going to be attacking may as well get in the way It looks like he's done that successfully as well. Yeah. Even a one forward doesn't fit there. I'm just looking at Dirge's position. If he is at range two, that is perfect for him. Range 2 with Bullseye, we're going to see some Proton Cannon action here. Not bad, Predator reroll. Oh, that is really Not good. Not bad. That's good. Changing one to a crit for the Proton Cannon, spending that focus, two hits, two crits. That is a pretty good roll. What's the crit? Uh, we have a direct <laughs> hit. And a damage engine on a UE, nice. not good. Um, and yes, aware that uh, attempted to use that calculate to evade one, but did roll that back. So that did, Bitterites did trigger. Oh, Luke, that's just rude. So one more damage into U9 there. Who needs mods when you've got the force just natively in your dice, it would appear? But we are very close to seeing Magva go down, which is going to change the dynamic of the game quite a lot for Ben, gives him a bit more hope. Ben's obviously got to hope to try and PS kill Magva here and get that gun off the ball because it's going to make things easier trying to take Luke down as well if they get target logs because they'll have full access to their rerolls.
and we saw Ben throw caution to the wind and trigger contraband cybernetics to do the talent roll with Q9. So I'm wondering if we're going to see that again now. Really stack up those red tokens, but also at the same time. Oof, see if he can that's get. A good oh, oh, that's good. That's good. That's range one bullseye, so that's predator. Focus there from contraband cybernetics on dirge as well for those that weren't sure how he managed that. He triggered contraband cybernetics so he could do the green. Contraband also triggered on Q9 there. Um, just going back on that console, oh. I think that's actually a disabled power regulator that they actually got there, not console fire. So uh, that's where the ion that Q9 has, rather than rolling for damage, is actually a disabled power regulator. So that was my bad when I was um, overlaying that I misheard it. But that's a lot of stress on the board there. I have not seen that many tokens in a while. Well, not for this few ships, anyway. No. Although, if you want to see a really healthy stack of stress tokens, you should definitely go back and check out my game versus Josh in Season 4, where I managed to just uber stress out uh, Cavill with a loose stabiliser and... Um, Panic Pilot and just all sorts of shenanigans. I think he had four or five stress in total. Yikes. And he was facing the corner of the board as well. Oh, <laughs> that's a big shot into Q9 there. Spend the evade while he got it. So just the crit, two health left on Q9, and that crit is a console fire this time. I think at this point that I realised that the first one wasn't. Oh, Ben just can't buy good dice this time. The dice gods are not with him. No. His positioning has been great, it's just his dice have really let him down this game. It's like... And that was... That was the range one from Dirge as well. And somehow Magva just goes, no thank you, I am okay. I think rolling back to use the target lock and the force to get the two hits. Rolling the correct amount of dice. There we go. Parity is restored somewhat. That is Magva down. Ben has taken the lead now. But it's going to be if Luke can get a really good shot in onto Ben, who has to do an ion maneuver. Choose an aggression, I like it. Just getting right in the way there, either have a range zero at me or fly past. Go. Now the worst case scenario here would be Q9 to roll console fire, take a damage, and then Luke sneak that last one through. That was the console fire roll for the last round that was missed. Oh, 
what has Luke done? He is going to get that range zero. Making that focus for defense. I think it's safer than just relying on the force there. Oh, console fire damage. <laughs> oh, this is not good. This is not what Ben wants. He needs he needs to half point Luke so bad, and that's not gonna do it. Oh my word. Those red dice. That's a bit better. That could do it. It's not the dice you want to modify. Spending the force because Dirge is dead to rights does not spend, stop the force spend, so no half points. If Andy can get one damage through. Three dice. There's one. Oh, it's a blank. Q9 is down. Ooh. Wow. That. I mean, it looked like Andy was about to run away with it with the damage he put on Q9 early. But then, taking Magfa out. I thought he got himself into a nice position to stop Luke from getting it, but the force really was with Andy that game, and it just paid off. Ben's dice were brutal in response to all of that good manoeuvring and everything that he did there. His dice just decided, no, not today, unfortunately. But that was absolutely crazy, but a nice solid win there for Andy, so we'll have a quick look and see how that jostles up the table a little bit there. So, Andy has scored himself a couple more points, getting himself up into fourth place there ahead of Josh. He is on the same amount of points as Wes. Ben is still right up there at the top, getting another point for a ship kill, so he might not have got the win, but he got a ship kill in there to get something out of that but Amy I do hope that you enjoyed that game no it was good fun thank you very much no worries and guys like I said we have plenty more action so please don't forget to like this video subscribe to the channel and we will see you next time